Oi, right, would you shut up? I'm making a devotion about peace. G'day, guys. Today's devotion is about peace. Uh, peace is one of the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace. Third, gets the bronze medal. All of the rest, they don't get a medal at all, unfortunately for them. The fruit of the spirit, I reckon they get a lot of airtime, and it's probably rightly so because they are really important. But if you've been reading the Bible for a while, you might have noticed that what Paul calls the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians chapter 5, he talks about heaps in his other letters as well. But he doesn't necessarily call them fruit of the Spirit in his other letters, or even the work of the Spirit in his other letters. He just speaks about them as being the result of having a relationship with God through Jesus. I'll show you what I mean. Have a look at Colossians chapter 3. In Colossians chapter 3, he talks about love, he talks about peace, he talks about patience, he talks about kindness as well. He talks about a lot of the fruit of the Spirit in Colossians chapter 3, but he never says the word fruit. That's just kind of an interesting fact. Uh, Paul uses the metaphor of fruit in Galatians to talk about in what he in other letters just calls the kind of the things that result from having a relationship with Jesus. Anyway, today we're talking about peace and Colossians is a good case study when it comes to the issue of peace. So if you've got Colossians nearby, why don't you open it up? Because in Colossians, we find out that peace is something that God brings about first and foremost through Jesus. Colossians starts with a really uh, amazing description of who Jesus is. Colossians chapter 1 Verse 19 says, For God was pleased to have his fullness dwell in him. That's Jesus. And through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. So Jesus died in order to bring about peace. God made peace through Jesus. And as a result, Peace should characterize God's people. It says this a little bit later in Colossians. In Colossians chapter 3, Paul says, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. That same peace that he was talking about in chapter 1. He says, Let it rule in your hearts. Since as members of one body, you were called to peace. So, the basic idea is that peace trickles down. Jesus achieved peace with God through his death on the cross. And that flows into our lives. And as a result of that, we should experience peace and live at peace with the world around us. Now, I think we have a bit of a muddled mental image when it comes to peace. Maybe we picture somebody uh, sitting on a rock with their legs crossed. Uh, they seem to be in harmony with their world around them uh, and tranquil in their environment or something like that. Well, maybe you have a young family or you've got a newborn child and peace and harmony with your environment is the furthest thing from your reality. So what does peace actually look like when you're in a young family? Or what does peace look like when you've got other people around you who are uh, distracting? And what does peace look like when you're sitting in a traffic jam all the time? which is what life feels like sometimes. Well, let me help you by saying that I think peace in the Bible, the peace that God tells us that we should be makers of, isn't like a peace with our environment, as if we should be in some sort of tranquil, uh, distant, foreign land all the time. It's actually relational peace. It's peace with the people around us. God made relational peace with us through Christ, we can now be in a relationship with him. And so he encourages us to make relational peace with the people around us. Romans chapter 12 says, If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. In Hebrews chapter 12, it says, Make every effort to live in peace with everyone. Now, since it's relational peace that we should pursue, what is one relationship in your life that requires peacemaking? Take a moment, think about it. What's one relationship in your life that requires peacemaking? Now, I think it's important to notice two things. 
Firstly, two things, peace. <laughs> um, firstly, Paul says, if it is possible, as much as it is able to you, as, as much as it is up to you, live at peace with everyone. There's a certain amount of peace that we are responsible for, but we're not responsible for having other people live at peace with us. So as much as it is up to you, live at peace with everyone. I think that's an important pastoral note because sometimes there will be ongoing tension in relationship, not because you're not willing to create peace and to be reconciled, but because the other party is not willing. The other thing that I wanted to say is that peacemaking doesn't mean sweeping things under the carpet. Peacemaking doesn't mean ignoring a conflict and hoping that the conflict will just go away. It normally means confronting the conflict, speaking to the person with which you have the conflict. I think we can learn this if we have a look at the life of Jesus, who was the ultimate peacemaker, remember? You don't ever see Jesus backing down from a confrontation with anyone. The Pharisees do the wrong thing. He charges up at them. Any of his disciples say the wrong thing. He charges up at them. It's not because Jesus wasn't a peacemaker that he was confrontational. It's actually because he was a peacemaker that he was confrontational. And so I think we need to sometimes be willing to have difficult conversations in order to pursue peace. Because we have experienced peace from God. And now we are proponents of peace in the world that we live in. So go and be at peace with the world today.